Hey, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit hello, back, hello. we relax, and we talk about some of the fun things going on in Linux and open source that we find interesting. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bride and Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching us live on mm-hmm. Twitch. Hi. Man, we got a bunch to get into this week. We have a new Microsoft story because, hey, when Microsoft does a new <laughs> seat, we got to talk about it just a little bit. And we're going to talk a, just a little bit about gaming, but it's more about Wayland. Stay tuned for that. But speaking of gaming, I've been playing NVIDIA did a thing. We're going to get into it. And it caused me to go back and play a game that I thought I would never have to play again. The irony is mm-hmm. not lost at all. You ever have that situation where you're like, oh, I'll never touch that again. Then something comes up where you have to touch it and um, you end up. want to test touching. it or something. Like, ah, yeah. And then <laughs> you realize, wait a second, <laughs> if it's just for this, it's called the Talos Principle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but Pedro has played Talos Principle all the way through, Pe- like me. I, I, have. <laughs> I, I have not. I have maybe completed the first level in Talos Principle and I have 90 hours in that game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because uh, that's all you need to do to unlock the benchmark. <laughs> you know, they tried that at first for the first uh, make, um, almost a month when the title sprint. No, you you need to complete um, things before we give access to the benchmark to which everyone went. Nah, <laughs> you need to fix that. Um, but yes, it, it turns out that the Talos benchmarking engine has a game hidden inside of it at some point. Hmm, that's kind of mm-hmm. interesting. What's new, Excellent. Joe? You got anything fun going on? <laughs> I'm still, um, I'm actually working on my room again, which is nice after the month of dealing with uh, shots and not feeling well. <laughs> so I'm, I'm back to it. I've cor- I've emptied another corner of my room so I can get ready for upgrades soon and doing good on that. <laughs> I'm Lock. keeping my penguins here as, as long as I can though. All right. <laughs> They have to stay in shot. Otherwise, how do we know it's you? Yes. <laughs> and 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 they're going to be here even when the room is empty. <laughs> I'm still going to have penguins there. <laughs> yeah. Pedro, have you destroyed yet another laptop? No. No? But I am, um, well, I am <laughs> trolling eBay to try and find cheap, cheap replacement bits for the uh, Adele Inspiron Duo. Because, yeah, the touchpad sending ghost clicks, that's a known issue. Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, after a while and the more you use the touchpad, it starts wearing down and then it starts sending ghost clicks. What kind of sausages are you using? Hmm? Sausages for your touchpad. These right here. (laughs) That's your problem. (laughs) Yeah, no, I'm just using my finger noodles. Mm. And, yeah, it's... There's no way around it. I have to replace the, uh, at least the top bezel, uh, even if I can keep all of the things. So it's a matter of finding one on eBay that's not terribly expensive. And the fan clickiness, Mm -hmm. very much appreciated to everyone in Discord who pitched in with uh, suggestions to try and get rid of the rattling. uh, That would have been Vin step number one. Find the opposite side blade. I did that, uh, and it didn't get away with the clicking. In fact, when it starts spinning uh, faster, uh, I could hear two clicks. It goes instead of just. Then just take the fan off. It it can't be passively cooled. It's not. It's not that advanced. Pedro, I need you to do an experiment, man. We can see. Aww. I'm going to need a lot Overheat. of copper then. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Um, Paige is going to tear it apart. It's going to spend a couple of months sourcing parts, stick it together, make it work. We'll get a screenshot in Discord and it'll go on shelf. I mean, that's what I did with the others. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I keep using them, but all the interesting bits are done. So now it's just me uh, poking around the thing. Very much an established <laughs> pattern. It is kind of brilliant. But <laughs> everyone knows Linus. Loves NVIDIA, so we got we got to talk about a driver <laughs> release. Why are we talking about a driver release? I bet maybe it's a big maybe, deal. Isn't that for Saturday? <laughs> no, I know, right? Usually that's how we're going to start off the news segment. But initial support for hardware accelerated OpenGL and Vulkan rendering on X Wayland has been introduced, and they've also Yay. added support for Prime Display Offload. That I'm like what for AMD GPU? Oh, okay, that's a little different, and. Um, for my brothers and sisters out there that play the video games, they've also added DLSS support with Proton. I tried it out, and it's legit. It's real. I happened. That was the one game 
I was talking about in the intro, Jordan and I went all the way through Youngblood and Wolfenstein. And uh, I have a little 2060, non-cape edition, a little six gig deal. And I could do 1080p and it's optimized. It uses Vulkan through Proton, not a problem. But at UHD, if I try to play it at uh, 3840 by 2160, Nah, I mean, it's a 2060, right? The guy can almost hit 60, mm-hmm. 52, 53. Went in, uh-huh. enabled this, put it on balanced, 80, 87, perfectly playable. And, oh, okay, that's kind of a game changer with some things. Uh, very happy with that. Uh, haven't figured out a way to capture this neatness yet. I just kind of want to show it off. Also, it enables me to use ray tracing. What weird moon feature is this? <laughs> I can get like 65 with the ray tracing, which is just reflections. That's what I'm doing in the game. No, Pedro like nailed it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Look, there's another puddle. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The reflection mm-hmm. on that puddle. Real crisp. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sold on ray tracing, but the DLSS is very, very interesting to me. Yeah, and they also added support for prime display offload, where both the display offload source and displayed offload sync are driven by the NVIDIA X driver. Uh, that's, that's a great accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I was really happy that the NVIDIA Prime support, um, there's support now for AMD GPUs. Uh, this is actually really huge, because I've read so many complaints all, all the time online with Prime users with AMD GPUs having a hard time getting this working. So mm-hmm. I haven't tr- tried that one myself, but because I, I've I've lived the world of NVIDIA Prime with the Intel VPU, so <laughs> it's life's been a little bit easier for me. <laughs> eh, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's let's be honest. Linus did uh, draw Nvidia that particular <laughs> picture in the poster behind Ven for a very specific reason, and that reason was Optimus. Uh, that entire technology <laughs> stack behind it, and how just unwilling Nvidia was to do anything about it when it ca- when it came to supporting it on Linux. It yeah, it was um, well that that's how it ended back in uh, <laughs> twenty twelve. Uh, but yes, the <laughs> NVIDIA to NVIDIA offloading is very interesting because if you have a low power system like, say, I, I don't know, for example, an ARM uh, based system with an NVIDIA Tegra SOC, and then you have a dedicated GPU alongside the Tegra SOC, and you can shift between the two and use the low powered one for just the regular stuff and then use the high powered one or the games or whatever that that seems very interesting yes it does uh but yeah it's good to see anyway and the vendor neutral actually having vendor neutral dispatch for prime is very appreciated nvidia you said you'd done that a long time ago but i see a bunch of mm-hmm. vendor neutral fixes in this uh, change log so you are fibbing <laughs> and uh <laughs> Yeah, that's right, <laughs> NVIDIA. You better get everything right the first time. No bug patches. <laughs> don't don't go oh, back. No. And- <laughs> that's the thing. They never said that it wasn't working. They just said, oh, it's in there now. It's like, but it doesn't work. But it's in there now. Yeah, did they it say it worked? Work? <laughs> 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 but yeah, the uh, interesting bit, the genuinely interesting bit outside of the DLSS, because yeah, that is the big one is Coolbits. They now have Coolbits 1 and 2 are enabled by default now. So Coolbits 1, if you have mm-hmm. mismatched uh, cards and you still want to SLI them, you can. Yeah. And cool. uh, Coolbits 2, which is fan control. So those two are enabled by default now. Thank yeah. you. That That's Yay. actually very much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> we got some love from NVIDIA. <laughs> I know. Interesting, interesting, strange times. Also, we want to point out that um, AMD released their uh, upsampling solution yesterday. And if you want to play around with that, apparently it works with Proton, Proton GE. So if you have one of those games, go give it a shot because anything's better than nothing, no matter what you're running on. Let's see, it works like that. And it's free on the, um, you don't even need an AMD card. So you can just go play yeah. with it. It's completely open source. And Intel was like, oh, yeah, we want some of that. <laughs> Good times for all. Rocketlytix 8.4 GA, which, why is it GA? I don't know, but it is available now. 
Yeah. So, yeah, th- this is actually really fast. The CentOS replacement distro Rocky Linux first general release is out now. And so Rocky Linux 8.4 is stable for production systems and binary compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.4. So you can run RHEL apps without RHEL installed. And this release is actually called the Green Obsidian. (laughs) And this release also lets other RHEL 8.4 binary compatible distributions use the free Migrate to Rocky tool for convenient in place migration, which is really awesome, and is that a the fashion? Rocky, yeah, yeah, it it was in yeah. the article, and I read it in another article. <laughs> 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 and uh, what's also cool is Rocky Linux has you know has great uh, free community support. They're over at Mattermost on IRC and the forums, so you can check them out if you need. You have questions. And they also have paid commercial support via via CIQ, which is really great. So they have progressed so fast, just within less than a year. <laughs> so mm-hmm. very impressive. Them and Alma Linux as well, which is another CentOS replacement distro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I the the one thing that I knew that they had talked about because the in place migrations for everyone who was already running CentOS eight and just didn't want to deal with streams so i went Mm. looking in their forums and um yeah no the discussion seemed to say a solid not yet (laughs) that's why i was asking is that is that official (laughs) oh that yeah because it was i read it read it in both articles two articles (laughs) okay it's not ready yet (laughs) yeah no (laughs) why would they put it in there (laughs) <laughs> that thread uh, it, the, with the last post was uh, one day ago. It's like, what? Why? Why is it? Eh? <laughs> so yeah, no. I guess uh, okay. You can try that. Uh, you can try that script that Jill mentioned, but um, not big. Probably not official. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's out. Um, they didn't take very long to do that. You know, for those of you who didn't take this glorious opportunity to switch over to Debian, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, it's an interesting boat to put yourself back in, which, you know, if it's Alma Mater or um, <laughs> Rocky, which you're, you're still moving to a project. I mean, this can happen again. That, that would worry me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like once you've had that panic attack go through <laughs> your company. <laughs> and I'm not talking about like small shops, like things I'm doing, things Pedro or Jill are going to be doing. We're fine. We, we, we can make that work. Mm-hmm. We're into a couple boxes. You know, we, we don't have to get permission and work up the food chain to get something changed. We can just go in there to, 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 to get it done. But if you're in a corporation of any size and you're running, if you were running Scent, if you're going to be running this or anything like that, I'd be terrified. I, I, I would have just moved to something else. But what are your thoughts on that, Pedro? Does that make any sense? Does that sound crazy talk? Uh, no, I mean... Let's be honest. Uh, (laughs) In most organizations, if you're the one actually implementing this, you don't get a say in the matter. You just have to do whatever Mm -hmm. the people um, upstairs tell you to do. Regardless of how stupid and counterintuitive and completely pointless it is, you got to do it. So, yeah, uh, maybe they caught the uh, little fear bug (laughs) after Mm. the Internet lost its collective. The the same people refused to learn from their (laughs) mistakes, too, so... (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That's why we fired. That's why they fired the intern. That was his fault. <laughs> and you're right. The real computer kid, Fedora for the win. <laughs> Fedora is a good choice. Especially yeah, that 34 release. The Deploy Fedora in production. Yeah. <laughs> Fedora's kind of boring. Jordan was even talking about that. I say boring in a good way. When I say boring, I am a huge fan of boring. You're talking to somebody who runs Debian. It's no longer the Wild West. Um, like, oh, cross your fingers, get it installed. Distro, maybe it'll boot, maybe it's installed mm-hmm. and everything works now. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you mm-hmm. get pipe wire set up out of the box. So, yeah, each to their own. I, I'm glad Rocky is available and the migration is going to eventually be relatively painless for those who want to go that route, which is great. But, uh, Pedro, you have a few Intel CPUs, so you're probably accustomed to when you hear that there's going to be an update to Intel. You're probably not expecting a performance gain. 
No, I, I'm really mm-hmm. not. In fact, whenever I see the Intel microcode uh, show up in the updates on any of those laptops, except for the one that has the AMD APU, uh, yeah, it goes, oh, okay, so it's time to run Geekbench again and see just how much performance I'm going to lose this time. And uh, Travis Downs, mm-hmm. uh, he's been writing about actually monitoring uh, the performance uh, implications Uh, of the mitigations for side channel and uh, speculative attacks, and uh, also uh, writing about the performance gains about the zero fill optimization that he's been looking at in the L2 and L3 caches in the CPU. And he's got the uh, the graphs at the top for Skylake and Ice Lake, and with the new um, Intel microcode, he says that he's unable to prove that it is the microcode that is slowing it down, but the graphs are mm. kind of unequivocal uh, at that point mm. because Skylake lost about 8 gigabytes per second of speed uh, at, in the L3 cache, and Ice Lake lost about 14 gigabytes mm. per second of speed in the L3 cache. Coincidence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, very, very good uh, observation from him as well. Um, the He noticed that as he was watching the zero fill um, optimizations, the actual results kept changing. Uh, so just by observing it, they kept changing. So he ran into uh, Schrodinger's paradox, mm-hmm. which is while the cat is in the box, you don't know if it's alive or if it's dead. But the box mm. itself was rigged that if you tried to open it, it would kill the cat. You know, the cat doesn't actually exist. It's <laughs> it's the, the, the whole paradox thing. But yeah. yeah, so by opening the box, he killed the cat. Proverbial, proverbially well, I'm speaking. I'm going to think about this, man. <laughs> so this, ultimately, this is more of a, huh, that, that's weird observation. Because it's not a massive performance. And again, if you're on Intel, you, you you know what's up. You're so, used to it at right. this point. <laughs> um, this is not as brutal as some of the previous ones, but it's a microcode update. So that's going to be stored in your volatile memory every time your system boots. And what I'm saying is your, your mitigations off technique, your kernel flag, it's not going to affect this whatsoever. The only way you're going to be able to like get your fractional amount of performance back is by rolling back the microcode. Unless you do a BIOS update which happens to have mm-hmm. the microcode, then it's forever if you're on MSI motherboard because my MSI doesn't let you roll back. I'm not grumpy at that at all, MSI. <laughs> um, <laughs> not even a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so my latest, uh, the MSI Prestige laptop, my pink one I showed last week, actually has a Comet, Comet Lake, Lake CPU, 10th gen Intel, not the Ice Lake CPU. So hopefully it wouldn't be affected but I'm also not running Debian on run, on it. I'm running Arch Garuda Linux, <laughs> which works, by the way, beautifully with Optimus. <laughs> oh, you missed an opportunity. For, by the way, I'm using Arch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am I know. actually Arch? technically using <laughs> I was... Arch. I have Manjaro in the Pinebook Pro. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Arch. So one of the things that we do not have a lot of... Um, if you do any type of audio production under Linux, be it music, uh, what I'm doing, live mixing, post production, for music in general, we got a lot of plugins. Um, you know, we have projects like Linux Studio Project, we have CAF plugins, we have X42. Um, on the commercial side, it's a bit thinner with ACM, Overtone, and you know, just smatterings of uh, types of plugins. I want to see more of that because that's the biggest catch when someone's thinking about moving over their system. To Linux is they're invested, you know, be it on Apple or Windows, their plugins, because people have thousands of dollars worth of plugins that they want to use. And currently, I know people are like, hey, but Carla, you know, there's Winebridge and all that fun stuff, which is great, but that just immediately goes out the door when you're dealing with uh, real time. None of that is a viable solution for anything I'm doing. And I'm always happy to see when there's a little bit of a challenge to make some new plugins. Now, this is um, from kvraudio.com. There's a prize fund they have set up because they're holding a little contest for people who want to make new audio plugins and share them with the community, which I think is great. Um, the developer challenge, you know, this has been going on since like 2006. Now, it, you could basically get a release brand new free audio plugin application, sound library pack, anything 
that's going to benefit the community at large. There's going to be five cash prizes awarded to the top entries. Public beta testing, it's not going to be allowed, so you can't like share it and get the word out or anything like that. It's not required to be open source, but it's kind of suggested. And uh, they included Linux in the audio plugin challenge. Kind of, if we come down to the bottom. Yes, we know Linux and other OS. Uh, who's going to run and other OS? That'll be fun. Appears <laughs> to be overlooked, but the Linux and other OS user base at KVR is very small, so we concentrate price distribution. Windows, okay. In the event, in the unlikely event, unlikely situation, um, the most votes is for Linux, other OS, it will be awarded 30% of the prize fund, and the next 40 will be split between Windows, Mac OS entries, and all the other funds. So not really throwing shade. It was going by their numbers, but I, I would really like to see, uh, there'll be links to this in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Once this goes live, um, if you were developing plugins, you know, be it LV2, VST2, VST3, something that does cross platform, make it open source. If you want to, if not, that's fine, but it, throw it in. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on this uh, for new Linux plugins and to give them the votes and hopes that they get some cash in return because that would be hilarious if they have to go and do their, Oh man. All right. Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> the, yeah, ben, it, it, well, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With all the, the commercial companies creating Linux drivers, you know, it behooves people to create open source ones. <laughs> We've got the calf plugins and lots Don't of other use great calf plugins. plugins, by the way, people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I left that out of the conversation for a reason. Uh, the, one, one reliable thing about calf plugins is there's something wrong with each and every one of them in a different way. Ah, okay. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Okay. Now, maybe Yay. maybe I want to run Ubuntu, but um, I, I want to like tell my friends uh, I also run Arch. Yeah. But I'm scared to so install this Arch. <laughs> oh, well, this is awesome. This is Paxstall, which will attempt to become the Arch user repository Ubuntu wishes it always had. This is actually an amazing project created by a 15-year-old developer who just wanted to have a repository for developers to package and distribute their own apps, like the Arch AUR repository. And it's really, really simple to use. Um, to install an app, you do sudo packstall tac i in the name of the app you want to install. Um, they, they have about just over 20 applications right now in their repository, but it has been growing since the project started. And, you know, it's still a work in progress. And I actually installed NeoFetch and CMatrix with it on a, a, one of my test machines. And it worked beautifully. I was really impressed. And it was fast. And it's nice because just like the AUR, it asks if you want to edit the script before you install, which is really cool. So I was really impressed. And I hope that more people start developing, you know, uh, con porting their software over to Paxstall. That would be awesome. Pedro, what type of hot <laughs> mess be this? Because... <laughs> I say that as a huge fan of hot messes, by the way. <laughs> you know, how, how is it going to deal with existing applications? I guess uh, conflicting applications or the same application if I get installed via, via Snap, a flat pack, or if I get installed via an app, do I have a source install and then I'm going to throw this on top of it? How's it going to deal with that? It's uh, just, it's a separate repository. Way, yeah. In much the same way that building the, um, source version if you just downloaded the tarball built it and installed it system wide without removing the apt or dnf installed version beforehand the snap and flatpak those are isolated by default so that wouldn't really make a difference this yeah it does uh its own it's very similar it is effectively like pulling the source and building it yourself, except someone's already injected malware um figured out all the dependencies and there's a script that it just follows in there. It's oh, built. so it's like Done. adding a PPA. Yeah, exactly. Except the PPA yeah. actually has some curation behind it. The idea yeah. here is to make it like the AUR where everyone can just load it full of malware. <laughs> <laughs> like a PPA, but the PPA is already pre-compiled, so you'd have to 
somehow inspect the precompiled binaries to find that malware as opposed to... You have to source, submit... Yeah. Uh, PPAs are hosted in Launchpad. You have to submit those to Launchpad. Mm-hmm. So Canonical has some oversight on that. And has that <laughs> stopped anything? Uh, it has. <laughs> when was mm-hmm. the last time you heard about uh, actual malware on a PPA? How would we know? We don't have the source. <laughs> <laughs> They're dab packages. Well, I mean, you can just open them. <laughs> I'm trying to give him a hard time. He's not playing along. This yeah. Is the <laughs> biggest problem. As you were. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it it is very much just like the AUR does it. Only instead of package builds, which is the thing that I think that that is a glaring omission. If you're going to try and bring the AUR to Ubuntu, You need a translation tool to translate the PKG build scripts from the AUR to um, Paxtal. That that needs to happen. Otherwise, people are just going to look at that as like, oh, so I have snaps, app images, flat packs, debs, and now this? Um, No. (laughs) (laughs) So. Or you could install Arch. Or you could just use Arch, yeah. <laughs> Manjaro is actually really nice, really easy to use. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just use that. <laughs> and DevOS, Garuda mm-hmm. Linux are all great distributions. And DevOS is also very good, yep. <laughs> but hey, go grab this, install it, <laughs> let us know your experiences with it. Send us a note with our contact form. Uh, I'd be more than happy. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's just like a smoldering mess or if it's the best thing since sliced, I don't know, pancakes. But... <laughs> Man pages. Yes. <laughs> really, really nice and simplified men pages. You probably know if you are someone who has to deal with men pages a lot, you've probably heard of TLDR. It's, well, it's this. It's, except Rust Desk takes TLDR and it builds it in Rust. They did because that. It, oh my lord, they did, didn't they? Yep, that's in yeah. Rust. Okay, never mind. I'm over it. <laughs> and of course, uh, this um, the article actually comes from opensource uh, dot com, which is the uh, Red Hat um, sponsored, owned, whatever you want to call it, uh, thing. And it is available in your fedoras and your uh, Red Hats and your CentOSs. It's available in Homebrew too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is. Oh, wait a second. No, I'm reading a different thing. <laughs> I just realized, um, so Rust Desk is gone. It's uh, this one's Teal Deer. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was just going to say, Not I was Rust looking Desk, for... Teal Deer. <laughs> because Rust Desk is gone now. Uh, the <laughs> Everything else I said was correct. It was just the name that was completely off. The <laughs> Yeah, Different the, app. Uh, TLDR, <laughs> it is, um, yeah, it's TLDR, but built in Rust. And they did a clever thing with the name there, which is why my brain was going, wait a second, Rust has, huh? <laughs> but yes, uh, it is, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's TLDR with the added Rust, because <laughs> Rust is the new Ruby, uh, so everything's <laughs> got to be rebuilt in Rust. Hey man, so, we can get Rust on Rails. <laughs> that's the way that's going <laughs> well, might even be in the kernel too there, there was never any serious talk of getting ruby in the kernel now was there <laughs> yeah yeah fair fair i guess you know Aww. ruby was the prototype so russ is like okay let's do it properly this time and I, i'm gonna get so much hate <laughs> well i think there's still plenty of room left for optimization on rust i respect rust and the fact that there is no possible way to put it in just trust me on this one mode when it comes to memory mm-hmm. matter like, no like, all right. I mean, it's forcing people to write better code, which I'm a fan of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, now that Google really wants Rust in the Linux kernel, the, that's going to solidify it even more. <laughs> this is probably it's weird run. to see Google pushing a Mozilla developed <laughs> yeah. technology to the Linux kernels. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing. Hey, we get to do this. It's been a while. Uh, Sacha, you around, man? Can you hook me up? There you go. Because he loves Linux. <laughs> hey. <right>. Yay. <clears throat> yeah, we got to talk about this. This is uh, something. When did this go down? Uh, 
was it late last week or was it Monday or something like Microsoft's Linux repositories were down for 18 plus hours and outage prevented Linux installations or upgrades from any Microsoft software. Oh, Tux mm-hmm. was sad. Uh, packages.microsoft.com <laughs> died in all the fires that happened. They didn't really give a very clear um, explanation as to what exactly went down. You know, we're talking like Azure, you know, the, cloud solution of choice for people who don't get a choice because management was jacked up. You would right think here. a <laughs> scrappy little upstart like Microsoft could, you know, avoid <laughs> such issues with replication on multiple services. But another thing I noticed, this is the reason I'm like, wait, something's going on. You get that feeling when something's a little squirrely somewhere on the internet, something you're trying to play with like, Oh no, this is probably just the beginning of some, Oh, here it comes. And Cloudflare goes down like an hour later and like, ah, yes, we were just catching the little bits. I noticed that because GitHub actions were jacked up. Like something's not right. Also Microsoft. So I'm like, Hmm, I wonder how this, pl- this is how it plays out. Yeah. <laughs> it plays out with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this was really really sad, but it also affected users trying to install .NET Core as well as Microsoft Teams and Microsoft SQL Server for Linux. So yeah, this this was a big deal. <laughs> Microsoft did a boo boo, and yeah, I had actually and- seen all of it the the hubbub on Twitter after LWW last week. <laughs> so- mm-hmm. And the, the I remember looking at the GitHub where people. We're just starting to report. It's like, okay, the repo's broken. We're getting a bunch of 404s. What's going on? Microsoft person comes in and says, um, we were having some space issues, but it should be fixed now. That was five hours in. Uh, so there were another 13 hours after that that it wasn't properly fixed. And we didn't, yeah, like Ven was saying, they didn't say anything. There's nothing, no official statement, no nothing. So VS Code, Teams, Edge, uh, .NET Core, SQL Server, everything else. Nope. Can't get it. (laughs) It's um, dead, Jim. uh, Yeah. Uh, I guess if you had a Raspberry Pi that you still hadn't disabled the Microsoft repo on. Still haven't forgotten about that one, Raspberry Pi. Uh, the uh, the 404 probably reminded you just like, oh yeah, I still have that enabled. Okay. Doing a better job than I was. I, I started troubleshooting um, my Pi, and I, I have the internet on the switch, power switch in here, so I have to cut the internet on into the studio so everything's wired up. Forgot to do that a couple of days ago when I was trying to update the Pi. I was getting a bunch of horror force. I'm like, man, everything's down. This is it's like three minutes into this. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. No more 404s. <laughs> <laughs> not, my proudest. Yeah, not, not my proudest <laughs> moment um something i'm really proud of is all of you who make these shows possible everything we do with letting zemecast you know be it this audio stuff video stuff gaming live streaming you can help us continue doing it by becoming a patreon at patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast we got a gang of membership levels that will get you all types of neat little features possible well no none of them will make you glow but if you close your eyes <laughs> you might feel like you're glowing um, thanks to each and every one of you who make that possible. Yeah. That's a, not your dice, you. share the show, whatever. That's brilliant. You know, we don't really have a marketing department. You guys are kind of cool with that. But yeah, we do an extra show each and every week as a big thank you to all our patrons. It's a pre pre super shows and production meeting. That's where we show up and we're like, hey, this is what we got planned. It turns into a movie or review or TV show review. All the other stuff, we just got to trust you not to narc us out when you listen to that. You get the uncut episodes in podcast format. So if you like this, there's a beginning and there's an end. This is just the middle. So you can get, you know, hour and a half, two hours of that and the big four hour rock block on Saturdays. There's no better background music currently available on the internet, guaranteed. But another thing we do, which is probably never a great idea, we have a little <laughs> thing in the studio. Like, I, I, Years and years went by and enough people asked, they're like, hey, do the Amazon thingy. And I went and made like a wish list. That's how we ended up with this. So um, <laughs> fair warning, but it's more entertaining that uh, you can send like little notes. And that, that's been our, at least my personal fun part about it, because there's always the uh, something to show up. This one, I get a new chair, everyone. 
I don't know who it came from. I didn't get a Yay. message. I tried to show it off to Jill and Pedro earlier and I stood up I'm like, well, that's kind of boring looking, isn't it? It looks like this. No, it's, just, it's 60s <laughs> modern. It's beautiful. It's uh, it, it chairs very well. Um, I, you did extract some blood if you were looking for that. Uh, I, not only, I, I got a message. The toll has been paid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm slightly smarter than lukewarm mayonnaise. I don't have the stuff shipped to my house. I have it shipped out to my rental property, which isn't far from my house. But I got a message and it's like, yo, you got a thing here. I'm like, all right, that's neat. So it was like yesterday, maybe the day mm-hmm. before, I went over to go pick it up. Like, well, you could have told me it was a big box. <laughs> it didn't fit in the turbo jetta anywhere it was too big so i'd pick it up <laughs> put everything in and then in my infinite wisdom when i put the studio together in the spare room i used to have everything in the basement which was core it, it was a death trap it was brilliant um when i moved everything into this room space requirements you know enough to walk around but you know i just came in first thing i brought in here was the chair i'm like where do i want to put the chair i'll put it right here so I built the desk and everything around it without the foresight of going, what? Oh, I, <laughs> what if you need to replace it? <laughs> yeah. can't move it out without this. Is- <laughs> <laughs> and by that time I did everything wired up every on the desk. I'm like, we're not even going to mess with that. We'll deal with that. That time finally came, ladies and gentlemen, I want to think Truggy for the pink chair. It just got squeaky after a couple of years. This doesn't have arms so I can bring my guitar in here which is also kind of brilliant. Nice. And, uh, but yeah, I had to disassemble the old chair in place and lob it over, then bring this one in pieces <laughs> and put it together. It was a fun time. So thank you, terribly mysterious stranger who didn't yes, send a note. Or I do need to thank a mysterious stranger because uh, you'll see it better on Saturday because there's a, there's a wizard hood, <laughs> a different one right there. Thank you very much. Uh, and yes, if you did write a note, it didn't make it. So send me DM on Maybe Discord, the or send me a DM on Twitter. Unless you really want to stay truly, truly I mean, mysterious, pa- at which point. Pedro's not even going to go through the effort of like pulling the robe out and show it anyway. He's like, no, I kind of can't. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. There you go. It looks velvety and soft. It is very velvety, and uh, the yeah. little bits at the end here are very soft. And this uh, bit right here is transparent enough that you can see through it. Uh-huh. Not, you know, oh. fully detailed, but oh. you can see through it just fine. And yeah, no, the the hood is very good, very oh, nice quality. You're, you're going to be a sparkly boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I'm going to be the single most fabulous uh, Plage Marizzo you've ever seen. It, it's going to be oh. great, then, because Jordan and I have... Um, like batching rooms because you know yes. it's like hey these fit and jordan's like oh those fit and they were also like 80 dollars too but they're brown and gold you're gonna be like oh you're gonna be the special I'm like, yeah it's, yes it's, it's black and uh bluish purple and oh. <laughs> what about you Joe? pedro's a sparkly person anyways so that's awesome <laughs> perfect for you Incredible. <laughs> So I got something from my wish list. Can you guys guess what this is? I got, <laughs> These are <nope>. cable. <laughs> These are <laughs> magnetic cable ties. <laughs> they go. They work really well. And oh, this is magnets, perfect okay. timing. Yeah, they're magnet magnets is perfect timing because I'm working on my room and uh, um, needing something to organize all my cables. So this is perfect. And this came from eship and he sent me a note yeah i eship's been one of our long time viewers um known him for a long time in chat and he said this is the best you could wish for jill they better be worth it (laughs) wink from (laughs) eship man magnetic i hope they got fresh batteries in them yeah (laughs) but they boy the magnets are really good they're actually really hard to take off so they'll they'll keep Keep the cords in place, and I like these these much better than um, using the Velcro because I just I can't stand dealing with Velcro. So, and cable cable ties I use inside the cases. So the um, the classic zip plastic tie everything zip ties. I'm sorry, <laughs> zip, zip ties I use inside the case. I don't <laughs> these are mess for outside. With, um, like zip ties, I feel like it's putting a ring on it. If if I want, that, that's a, that's yeah. a commitment. Like, mm. It is. When, when I do you is change I save something, the, you gotta uh, cut it. You know the twist ties? 
things come in? Ah, oh, the twisty ones, yeah. Oh, those are my temporary yeah. solutions. Trash like, bag. Once I kind break of up the zip ties, I'm like, yeah, all right, <laughs> make it look make it look fancy with the good zip ties, and uh, <laughs> that's the thing. Also, we have a long time patron, Abstraction, who has increased his pledge. <laughs> He has now reached uh, a Chicago level of Woo-hoo. awesomeness. We want to thank him for that. Yay! That is brilliant. And um, thank you. It is because it forces me to rework the credits every time that happens. <laughs> Yay! Aww. It's worth he makes the joy. great synth music too. He makes great ambient music, which I love. <laughs> now let's get into mm-hmm. some pie. Yeah. It's not quite as fabulous as your rooms, but it's very colorful nonetheless. <laughs> it's a uh, Cheerios? Yeah, oh, cereal. Yeah, like alpha, cereal alpha pie. Bits, or alpha <laughs> it's alphabet <laughs> tomato soup and sedge pie. Mm. Okay, fair. All right. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, raspberry pie proper, but uh, if that picture on the top of the article there is anything to go by, someone is clearly aiming for the zero. Also, the name. It's the Rad, uh, Radxa Zero. And, yeah, it is the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi Zero. And very, very limited numbers right now, obviously, because the, they just started production. And unlike the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, they these actually have, well, uh, multiple variants with um, significantly faster uh, processors. However... The price is a bit higher. The cheapest model is $15 for the 512 uh, DDR4 bits of RAM uh, with the Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth, which, you know, the Raspberry Mm -hmm. Pi Zero W effectively does the same thing with a slower uh, processor, but uh, and no built-in EMMC. These actually have, uh, some of them have uh, built-in EMMC, so... That is something to account for. The high-end one, though, it looks very interesting because it has 4 gigs of DDR4, 16 gigs of uh, built-in EMMC, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and the, uh, mm-hmm. what is it? Uh, they had, I had the thing I like. There we Enough go. with this M-Logic technical jargon. One point eight gigahertz. What? Eight? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, the uh, the uh, Amlogic 1.8 gigahertz quad-core um, A53 with the Mali G31 MP2 GPUs. So these have a lot of uh, power Yes. behind them, <laughs> unlike the Pi Zero. So that, that's interesting. For that form factor, that's very interesting. Four gigs yeah. for 45 bucks, something you can play around with. Yeah, it is more expensive than... Um, Raspberry Zero W, but I can be honest. The, the Worth the power. <laughs> Zero W, Worth I it. bought one to set up a, you know, just webcam to do a demo. I'm like, this is possible. And um, that that was some flashbacks to playing around with the original Pi. Like, <laughs> because that's what they're using. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they've got it down to that form factor, which yep. is also <laughs> impressive that it's got built in Wi Fi's and all that fun stuff. Same with this, with the form factor and all that fun stuff. Um, it runs at Armbian, so okay, yep. it can run Correct. retro arch, yeah. Malaka. pretty neat. <laughs> Tell us That's what really you run nice. on your pipe. The like forty five <laughs> is about as high as I would go. That 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 has my same issue with like micro SD cards and price because I will lose them. Yes, I have lost much <laughs> larger items in my house than that. <laughs> And it's not just the a little fun bigger stuff. than a Sony uh, memory card. <laughs> also, that's steppable too. That's like, oh, like well, fine. Um, it has borked. And at forty five dollars, it's not going to break the bank. But you're going to feel terrible about it. Like, man, <laughs> buy another one. Yeah. So, um, if you happen to step on electronics around your house and you want to share your stories, trials, and tribulations, how can you do that, Pedro? Yes, uh, tell us about that time you stubbed your toe in the Raspberry Pi case you made out of Lego. <laughs> it's a better love story than the neodymium magnets on my um, welding table in the garage <laughs> that, that are still there after they've smashed my fingers on. Like the third time I finally learned, I'm like, you know what? Fine. Yeah, you no, just you stay there now. You live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, it, do tell us your uh, technology horror stories. Go to LinuxCapeCast.com. You hit the contact button at the top. It gives you a form. Pick LWDW and we'll feature it right here on the feedback section. Uh, Patreons, of course, also get um, 
a bit of a bonus if you leave us a comment and you want, uh, you know, the extra bit of uh, attention. But the easiest that way to do that is by hopping in our Discord <laughs> if you're a Twitch sub yes. or... That, mm-hmm. That's the great place. Our Patreons, to, yeah. Discord is the place to go. And here's another thing. We got a wide open IRC, which is tied to our Discord. So if you want to hop into IRC, you know, we're, we're not trying to wring money out of you. It's just kind of keep the riffraff out. But uh, that's where we'll have conversations with you, not on Twitter. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is for, you know, arguments on the internet. I, that's what it's there I'll for. I'll always hit somebody back. Oh, also, like YouTube. I'm like, oh, hello. Oh, that's funny. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty funny. Oh, by the way, here's a three, 240 word. I'm like, nope, not happening. Send me an email, like Pedro was saying. So we got one from Shlem D. Let's talk about interfacing Linux, which is a series I do when I have the time and the spare cash available. It's just something I do on my side project because I want to get more people making music, doing audio stuff on Linux. And one of the great ways of doing that is repurposing older hardware that no longer work on Mac and Windows PCs. And he just writes in just a thanks. I'm like, oh, thank you. Do keep these videos coming. Question mark. Question mark. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot since finding the Motu Traveler, which I did a video on. Uh, it's my, I got a Motu thing I'm working on right now. Uh, and I often find myself confused trying to follow a Linux forum discussion. Here you talk like a producer, which I understand. See, that's right. That's right, Pedro. Old man Vint building bridges. Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you, Schlim. That was nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Vint's videos are actually... Very good. Uh, Ven, I'm going to need you to start focusing on making Android videos because I don't want to deal with XDA forums anymore. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I need a Ven, but for the Android side. (laughs) That is like a lot of the research that goes into the interfacing video. Linux videos is like, I try to do one a month. I, what I'm doing and I'm looking for any sympathy. I just take some money and just light it on fire. Okay. But mm-hmm. the good that comes out of that is when somebody's looking like, hey, can I make this work on Linux? Yes, you can. And you don't have to go through like web archived and like find <laughs> the now gone Fado compatibility list that kind of worked. Or you find yourself digging through 13 year old archived email discussion threads on Usenet. I'll do that. And for you. maybe this patch will still work if I try to apply it to a current cur- uh, current kernel and kernel panic. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> There's all types of fun stuff and ways to get yourself up and running. And I know several people have asked, why don't you do the YouTuber special? Which is the focus, right? Scarlet, the little red, you know, the little cost reduced thing. Motu makes one. Um, I think a couple people have them. A bunch of people make them. Those are class compli- compliant. You plug them in. They're done. I mean, mm. all, all of those interfaces, they're, you know, same thing like inbox. They're glorified sound cards with an XLR hole in the front of them. They're not interfaces. You're not going to be doing any matrix routing. You know, they, they don't have FPGAs in them. They're kind of focusing on. But I, I, I did the Apogee one, which is very affordable, and it's USB. So things like that. Those are going to be fewer and far between. What I'm trying to find is stuff that is not documented and I'll let you know whether or not it works like weird stuff it's like hmm why do they still make a pci format converter in 2021 hmm <laughs> i had to go find out <laughs> yeah stuff like that so thanks Shlub. glad to be of help all right uh we gotta get out of here thanks for showing up everyone we're gonna roll some credits yeah. as soon as i get <laughs> this music up and running there it is look at it well listen to it don't look at music <laughs> it's shy Man, I can taste sound now this monitor's really loud <laughs> Aww, I know everyone in chat things. <laughs> Omega said right there everyone. Everyone. all of our executive producers thank you Daisy Bobs <laughs> FX boy <laughs> See, I remembered to put you in abstraction, abstraction. <laughs> yay abstraction Chicago <laughs> kicks a lot of butt, so thank you both very much. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, yeah, there's the we love you all. Sure. <laughs> it, it's crazy how <laughs> many people actually want this show to be a thing, so it, it hasn't fully quite sunk in yet. They they just show up to watch you hate on things. Bye everyone. We'll see you next <laughs> week.
Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>